I always enjoyed light gun games, and many of the classic gaming consoles had some really fun ones. The Mr. FPGA offers you multiple ways to play those light gun games, so you can get a similar experience to the original console. To get an authentic experience, you can use the original light guns, but if those aren't available to you, there are less authentic options. You can use a mouse, or the method I will be showing you today, a Wiimote. So to set up the Wiimote as a light gun, there are some requirements you need. You'll need a Wii sensor bar. Official sensor bars have a proprietary connection that will be more difficult to use. Luckily, there are third-party sensor bars available. I'm using this third-party bar that has a USB connection, so I can plug it in directly to the USB hub I'm using on my FPGA. You'll also need official Wiimotes. First-gen Wiimotes work best, but Motion Plus Wiimotes will still work with the caveat that you will have to sync them after every time the Wiimote disconnects from the FPGA. Third-party controllers may work, but they are known to have issues. Official Wiimotes will have the Wii name on it, but who knows if some knockoffs decide to do the same. I tried a third-party controller and it did not work for me, but the official controller did. Okay, so now let's set up the Wiimote with the Mr. FPGA. On the Wiimote, open up its battery compartment and hit the red sync button. The four blue lights on the front of the controller will start blinking. Then turn on Bluetooth sync on the Mr. by either holding down the OSD button on the I.O. board or pressing the F11 key on a keyboard connected to the Mr. FPGA. Make sure you do it quickly after hitting the Wiimote sync button because the Wiimote won't last long trying to sync to another device. You may have to hit the sync button again if there are a lot of Bluetooth devices in the area and the Mr. did not have enough time to find the Wiimote. After turning on the Bluetooth sync button on the Mr., the syncing window will come up and the Mr. will start pairing with nearby devices. Eventually, you will see a Nintendo named device show up and be automatically paired. Once the pairing is done, you will see the four flashing blue LED lights change to one steady blue light. Now we have to go to the Define Joystick Buttons menu and configure the Wiimotes button for the main Mr. menu. Set the controls to how you want them. Then, place your sensor bar on the top or bottom of your display. So we have the Mr. OS recognizing the Wiimote, but we're not done yet. We also have to individually configure the Wiimote with each core that supports light guns. The setups are similar, with some minor differences. Let's go over the setup for some cores so you can understand how it works. I'll start out with the NES core. Load it up and open its Mr. menu. Scroll down to Input Options. In Periphery, select Zapper, Joy 1, or Joy 2. The number joystick should be the player controller your Wiimote is set to. So, if your Wiimote is player 1, set it to Joy 1. And if your Wiimote is player 2, set it to Joy 2. For Zapper Trigger, select Joystick. Now go to Back, and define the NES buttons for the core. When you're asked for the Zapper button, Make sure you press the Wiimote's trigger if that's what you want. I'm setting it to the trigger of this Wiimote gun attachment. When you're done defining, load up an NES light gun game. Here's the classic duck hunt. You can see a little red crosshair that moves when I move the Wiimote around. And now I'm testing Freedom Force. Okay, so we're done with the NES core setup. Let's now set up the Master System core, so load that one up. Open its Mr. menu, scroll down to Input, then scroll down to Gun Control, and change it to either Joy 1 or Joy 2. Again, like the NES core, the number joystick should be the player number your Wiimote is set to. Gunfire must be Joy. I'm not sure what gun port does, but I always leave it as port 1. I think it might be for when a game might expect a light gun to be on a specific controller port on the console. Now choose whatever size you want for the crosshair. Then go back and define the master system controller buttons for the Wiimote. Fire 1 will be the trigger button. When we're done defining buttons, 
Let's test the settings by playing some light gun games now. This game is Gangster Town. To me, it always looked like an impressive 8-bit game. And here is Rambo 3. It's pretty much an Operation Wolf clone, but it's a good one. Very impressive graphics for the day. Now, I'll go ahead and set up the Genesis core, so let's load that one up. Open its Mr. menu and scroll down to Input. Change gun control to either Joy 1 or Joy 2. Like the previous cores, the number joystick should be the player number your remote is set to. Gunfire should be Joy, and then choose your crosshair size, then go back. And then define the Genesis buttons for the Wiimote. Button A is the button you want to use for the trigger. When I'm done, I'll load up a game. I'm playing Lethal Enforcers here. And here's one of the mini games in the Menacer 6 cartridge. Finally, I'll show you the Super NES setup. Let's load up that core now. Open its Mr. menu and scroll down to Hardware. For Super Scope, set it to either Joy 1 or Joy 2. Again, like the previous cores, the number joystick should be the player number your remote is set to. Super Scope button should be Joy. Set your preferred crosshair size. The gun type should be set to what gun the game you're playing expects. Konami games expect a justifier. I believe all other light gun games use the Super Scope, but I'm not 100% sure. If the light gun support doesn't work, then just change this option. Now go back. And then define the Super NES buttons for your Wiimote. Any buttons with SS on them are Super Scope buttons. When we're done defining controls, let's move on to some games. This is Battle Clash. And here is T2, the arcade game. So we got the Wiimote working on the Mister as a light gun. And it was pretty cool playing some old school games with it. There is a major issue with it though. You may have probably noticed that the accuracy isn't very good. I'm not sure if it's an issue with my third party sensor bar or my CRT being too small but the crosshair is way off from where I'm pointing at the screen. But I did try it on one of my HD TVs with the same accuracy problems. I also tried the candlelight as a sensor trick to see if that improved, but it didn't. I even tried Mr's calibration menu and that also didn't help. It did work better on my computer monitor, not 100% accurate, but much more playable than on my CRT or HD TV. I think I'll just mount the sensor bar to my desktop's monitor instead. Since I have the Mr. FPGA outputting to both my CRT and monitor at the same time. Are you using a Wiimote with your Mr. FPGA? If so, let me know in the comments and what your experience is with it. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.